If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. Hello and welcome. So in the sequence of videos, we've been talking about correlations. And so far, we've talked about the Pearson's correlation, which comes with certain assumptions that the data should be linearly associated and it's applicable for the variables which are continuous in nature. Essentially, at least the interval or ratio scale variables. Then we talked about the Spearman's rank correlation, which is applicable even for the data that's ordinal in nature. In fact, it's a rank correlation. So we convert the continuous values into ranks and then we try to study the monotonicity between the variables. That being said, let's move on to the biserial correlations. And what's different here? A biserial correlation is a correlation between a dichotomous variable, that's a binary variable, and a continuous variable. Now, surprisingly, this is less known and taught in a lot of courses, but this is very, very powerful. Why? Because a lot of times when you're dealing with a problem, your target column might be a binary variable. For example, you're trying to detect whether a patient is positive when it comes to coronary heart risk or not. And you may be trying to predict this with the help of a numerical variable, which could be as simple as a blood pressure. Similarly, there could be cases when you're trying to predict whether a borrower is likely to default or not. And maybe you're using credit score to predict that. And in such scenarios, you can easily use biserial correlation. So let's understand this a little closely. So we have one variable, which is binary in nature, a dichotomous variable, could be a yes or no. And the other variable is continuous in nature. We'll be talking about a specific case of biserial correlations that's known as the point biserial correlation. A point biserial correlation essentially is the same as the biserial correlation, but it is specifically used when continuous variable is measured on an interval or ratio scale. So the difference between the two, biserial and point biserial, is that in biserial, the numerical variable could be any scale, whereas in case of a point biserial, you want it strictly to be interval or ratio scale. Now let's talk about the mathematical expression or the equation for a point by serial correlation coefficient. The expression is like this. Let's understand what are the elements of a point by serial correlation. So y1 bar here is the mean of the continuous variable for the group with the binary variable coded as one. And y0 bar is the mean of the continuous variable for the group with the binary variable coded as zero. What does it mean? We have one categorical variable with two levels, dichotomous variable, zero and one are the two levels that we have, and we have a numerical variable. So we filter out the data for the ones, and then for the corresponding continuous variable values, we calculate an average. Similarly, the y0 bar represents the case when you filter the data for all these zeros as a level for dichotomous variable, and corresponding continuous values are taken an average of. That's y1 bar and y0 bar represent. Then we calculate the standard deviation of the continuous variable, and this is taking both the categories together. So this is overall continuous variable for which you calculate the standard deviation. And then we have n1 as the number of cases in the sample coded as one on the dichotomous variable, and not is the number of cases in the sample coded as zero on the dichotomous variable, and then n is the total sample size. You can imagine that will be n1 plus n0, one and the same thing. So now let's look at the visual representation of a point by serial correlation. This is how it looks like. And it's very different from a typical Pearson's correlation kind of a view because you have both the variables which are continuous in that case. And even in case of Spearman's rank correlation, the variables have a monotonic relationships. But in case of a by serial correlation, one variable only attains one of the two values, either it's zero or one. And the other variable is continuous in nature. That's why Let's say we've kind of color coded here. So for all these zeros, you can see these points in red, which represents a spread of the numerical variable corresponding to zeros. And these green points here represent the spread of the continuous variable corresponding to the dichotomous category as one. So this is different from the typical correlations that we talk about. Next, we will move on to solve a numerical problem, first manually, and then we'll solve the same problem in PyCon. We have to investigate the relationship between the social media engagement and the purchase amount using a given data set, we have to compute the point by serial correlation coefficient. So here's the kind of data that we have. We have a customer ID, which is a serial number, and we have the social media engagement, which is a binary variable. It's, it contains ones and zeros. And then we have the purchase amount in dollars. This is some numerical value, which is kind of continuous in nature. So how do we go about computing the point by serial correlation here? So we begin by first filtering the data for one of the two dichotomous categories. Let's say we choose all the ones. And that's where we had that y1 bar, if you remember. 
So we will select all the numerical or continuous values corresponding to the dichotomous variable as one. And then we take an average of these values. Let's say that number comes out to 87. We have to do the same exercise for the other category, which is select all these zeros and do an average of all the numerical values of the continuous variable values corresponding to zero as the level of the dichotomous variable. That is, let's say, y not bar. That value comes out to 6.8. Now we need to calculate the standard deviation for the y variable, which is the entire purchase amount column. So on the next slide, we can put all these values. This is just a mathematical calculation. You have to put all the values from every single value. You need to subtract the overall average and then square it and add it and divide by the counts. So in this case, when we compute this, we'll get a value which is 43.48. This is our standard deviation for the continuous variable. Now we have to put all these values in the formula. So we know y1 bar, we know y2 bar, we know the standard deviation. N1, N0, and N square are already known. So N1 is five, N0 is five, and N would be 10 because that's the total number of observations. If you plug all these values here, we'll get the answer as 0 0.922. That's the point by serial correlation coefficient. Now let's solve the same problem in Python. All right, so we are looking at Google Collaboratory and we are just going to validate if the value that we calculated for point by serial correlation manually is the same that we'll get when we use a Python library. And this again is available through the SciPy library. The stats module has a class called point by serial R, which is essentially the point by serial correlation coefficient. We have the same data that we had shown you on the slides and we've kind of created two arrays, one for the dichotomous variable and the other for the continuous variable. And when we apply this particular class, we will be getting an output that will contain the correlation coefficient as well as the p-value. But we are only interested in the correlation coefficient right now. So we'll quickly give the right inputs, which are related to these two arrays and calculate the point by serial correlation coefficient up to three decimal places. Let's see what we get. So we got 0.922. If you remember, this is exactly what we got when we did the calculation manually. So let's talk about the assumptions related to point by serial correlations. First of all, one variable has to be dichotomous in nature and it must be truly dichotomous. It means it has only two categories. Second is the observations should be independent. Pretty much in all the correlations we have seen that we don't want the set of observations to be related to each other. So each XY pair that we have is independent of each other. Then we talk about the continuous variable being measured on at least an interval scale. That's the specific case of point by serial correlations. And then the variability of the continuous variable should be constant across the two categories of the dichotomous variable. Now, this is an important assumption. We took a try problem, so we didn't really check this. But generally, what's believed is that the variation in the continuous variable, as you filter it for each category, should be comparable. And then we should not have outliers in the data. Why? Because we were repeatedly calculating the averages for the continuous variable corresponding to a class. So we should not have outliers in the data because if we have outliers in the data, we should not be calculating averages. We should not be working with the means. So these are the quick assumptions related to point by serial correlations.